YouTube and welcome to your 19th JavaScript tutorial and in this tutorial we'll be looking at something called set timeout and set interval now what these two functions do is set timeout is used to run a loop after specific time interval and set interval is used to run a loop again and again after a specific time interval now by this what I mean is set timeout runs the loop only once the code only once after specific time interval and set interval is kind of an infinite loop which runs the code again and again but after certain time interval for an example let's create a loop with set timeout let's supply it an anonymous function uh, let's say alert just a simple alert and just supply it with 1000 seconds now here 1000 milliseconds milliseconds is equal to one second in JavaScript in set timeout and set interval function we pass the duration of the time interval in milliseconds and 1000 milliseconds is equal to one second so this means run this code after one second let's refresh this page and as you can see we got an alert box right here okay so but if I replace this keyword with the keyword send interval and then reload this page then we'll get an alert box after every second as you can see we are getting an alert box after every second uh, let me just move the set interval keyword and the code becomes unusable okay so basically what it is used for is running a loop it's basically like a for or while loop but in terms of the function this loop allows you to specify a time interval for running between two events for example a for loop immediately runs and completes this task but using a set interval or a set timeout loop you can actually Uh, hold on between running the code block again and again and to clear and to get out of this loop what we do is first of all we place this loop in a variable with any name for example I'm doing this in an X variable and let's create a condition let's say I'll increment this here every time and I say if I is equal to 5 then break out of this loop or basically clear the interval with the variable x now what it happens is first time this loop runs i is incremented i is 1 this condition is not met the loop is run again after a second until i becomes 5 and then the loop is cleared let's see let's refresh this page we get an alert first select box second third fourth and this one is the last one after this the condition is met and clear interval x is executed now clear interval x gets the code out of this loop and using set timeout as well we can use clear interval with it but it is not a much of use because set timeout only runs once and this loop is kind of asynchronous that means the code down here would also run and work with this loop that means if I do something like document dot write hello world right here even with the loop running then as you can see the code does not block the execution of the program such functions are called asynchronous function or basically this is an asynchronous code block okay so the main purpose of this tutorial is to make you understand the function of set interval and set timeout so based on this let's create a kind of self updating clock for this I have the HTML already ready and let's create a function clock to get the current date in JavaScript, we use the new date 
to get the date in any variable let's create a variable date and give it value of new date now if you try to console log this what you will get is a long string of date which has all the required information for example if we refresh this page and view in the console log then what we see is Wednesday March 25 2015 and the time and then GMT and Indian Standard Time and all that stuff you want and remember that this is uh, basically relative to the computer which is saying this function for instance if you call if you place this code on your site and your visitor is from US then he would see the US time instead of your server time for using server time you have to use PHP anyways coming back to the tutorial we have this clock function and let's get the hours minutes and seconds and to get hours we do date dot get hours pretty simple for minutes we do the same self-explanatory coding and for seconds we get date dot get seconds and finally we need to put all of these three into the very or the containers in HTML we have created so to do that let's say get element by ID and in R span dot R will place the text R's and let's let me copy this and just modify it to minute and to seconds and this one to minutes and to seconds cool okay now let's try to refresh this page and see what happens oh sorry we didn't create any set interval yet so this would not all actually let's supply the function name here notice I'm not using the parenthesis here because it by default accepts a function name and uh, let's supply the duration here you can actually add also make a function anonymous function right here but I have made a separate function to keep the coding clean and let's see this live now as you can see we have got our time and the clock ticking now what's happening here is this function this function right here reduce this this function right here is called every second and these variables are updated every second and we are appending new text to all this HTML every second I hope this concept is clear now if we refresh this page for a second we see the two semicolons which doesn't look nice so to fix this problem we can actually manually call this function right here before the set interval because as I told you set interval will call this function after one second the document has loaded uh, let's refresh and as you can see nice and clean the function is called immediately and then set interval does its job so this was something about set interval and set timeout these two are very interesting and you can use your CSS and graphics like creating a circular clock with a CSS sprite and incrementing the sprite name or the sprite background position every second and you could really create great JavaScript clocks with set interval and set timeout and this was all about set interval and set timeout and don't forget to subscribe the channel and thank you for watching this tutorial